Hello everyone, long time no see. I hope you guys are doing well. As you already know, I am Christopher and I'd just like to say I'm sorry about the mess in my background. Those are all my wedding decorations for my wedding that's coming up soon. So if you just ignore those decorations for now. But um, I know it's been a while since I've made a video and I decided I would make an updated version of my how to mod your Nintendo Switch because I know that video was for 17.0 and Nintendo has updated their firmware to 18.1. And I know it would make you all feel better watching a more up-to-date video on how to mod your Switch. Now, if you're familiar with how to mod your Switch and don't need to watch all these steps, I do have all the files in my Discord where you can join and download them. But for those of you who would like a tutorial on how to mod your Switch, then this video is for you. I'll do my best on making this really in-depth and try to explain every step as clear as possible. So let's get to it. So as always, I like to list the things that you're going to need for this tutorial. Obviously, a Nintendo Switch. More importantly, a unpatched V1 Nintendo Switch. If you have a Nintendo Switch Lite or an OLED or a version 2 Switch, then this tutorial will not work for you. I get so many comments asking if you can mod those types of switches with this tutorial. No, you cannot. Anything after V1, you will need a mod chip installed in order to mod your Switch. You'll also need an SD card for your Nintendo Switch and a SD card reader, or you could have one of these things that can read the micro SD card on its own. But you'll also need this if your computer doesn't have a SD card reader already in it. You can buy these adapters from Amazon. They're very cheap. You'll also need an RCM jig. It's a little tiny piece of plastic with two little metal prongs at the end. Pretty hard to see, but you can purchase this on Amazon as well. They're very inexpensive. This will make modding your Switch easier, or you could use a paper clip. But that's a bit more difficult in my opinion, so it's up to you. You risk damaging your Switch if you use a paper clip. And you'll also need a USB-C to USB for your Nintendo Switch to connect to your computer. You could just use the one that you get from Nintendo. If you don't have any of these items, I'll list everything in the description down below where you can purchase them. So to start this tutorial, we're going to go to System Settings. And we're going to scroll all the way down to System. And as you can see, I'm on the current version, 18.1. So we're going to scroll down to Serial Information. And you're going to want to write down your serial number or just have it on you for this next part. We're going to go to ismyswitchpatched.com and we're going to input our serial number to see if we can mod our switch. So now that we're here at ismyswitchpatched.com, we're going to want to select the prefix that matches your serial number. Mine is XAW1. And then we're going to input the first six di uh, digits of your serial number. So mine was 000594. And as you can see, my console is not patched. Now, if you get anything other than a green notification, like for instance, red, then your switch is definitely patched and you can't proceed with this tutorial. I don't know which serial numbers are yellow, but there are a few version one switches that will give you a uh, yellow notification, meaning your switch may or may not be patched. And the only way to truly find out is to continue with the tutorial and, and to see if you're one of the lucky ones and your switch is moddable or if it's not. So for the next part of our tutorial, we're gonna go to Ease US Free Partition Manager. What this essentially is, is a free formatting tool. This will allow us to format our SD card into FAT32 format. So what we're gonna do is select free download and the download should begin. If a pop-up appears asking for your email, you can just exit out of that and you can select the free download again. You don't need to input any information to get this program. Next, we're gonna select Tegra RCM and we're gonna download the installer. Afterwards, we're gonna go to Atmosphere and the current version is 1.7.1. So we're gonna scroll down and we'll download the zip file under the Assets tab and Fuse.bin. Now we're going to go into Hecate and the current version for this one is 6.2.1 and we'll scroll down to assets and we'll download the zip file. Next, we're going to go to Sigma patches and we're going to download the Sig patches only. 
For now, we're going to minimize our Internet Explorer. So we're going to go to our downloads and we're going to install Ease US Partition Manager first. So now for me, it says reinstall, but for you guys, it should say install. So just follow the installation wizard. I'm not going to do it because I already have it installed. So I'm just going to run with the latest version. Once your installation is finished, it should pop up. And now we're going to want to insert our SD card from our Nintendo Switch into our computer. So now in order to format your SD card, you're going to want to take your SD card out from your Nintendo Switch. And we're going to put it in our micro SD card reader. And then we're going to plug this in to our micro SD adapter that's connected to our computer already. Now your Switch folder should automatically open. If not, just go into your PC and open up your SD card folder. And if you have anything that you want to back up, now is the time to back it up. Because once we format our SD card, we will lose all our files on our SD card. So I can't stress that enough. Now is the time to back up your files if you don't want to lose any saves, albums, videos, or anything like that. So now that we have our Switch SD card into our computer. We're going to want to format it to FAT32. So we're going to select the disk drive and we're going to select format. And for the partition label, you can label it anything you'd like. I'm just going to label it switch SD. For the file system, we're going to select FAT32. And the cluster size, we're going to select 32. And we're going to leave it as a quick format and we're going to select OK. And it's going to ask us if we really want to format this. We're going to select yes. And then we will execute the task. We're going to select apply and let the partitioner do its thing. Once that's finished, we can select done and we can just exit out of the program. Now we can go into our PC and open up our switch SD card. And this is where we start installing the mods into our SD card. So we're going to start with atmosphere and we're going to drag and drop the contents of this folder into our SD card. Once that's finished, we're going to go back into our downloads and we're going to open up the Hikate folder and we're going to just drag the bootloader only into our SD card. As for the bin file, we're going to want to drag that onto our desktop or if you'd like to be more organized, you can create a folder and drag it into there. This is what we'll be using as our payload. So for now, we don't need it, but let's just move it to our desktop. Now we're going to select back and we're going to open up SIG patches and we're just going to drag and drop into our SD card. Once that's finished, you're going to want to go into bootloader on your SD card, select payloads, and we're going to drag and drop our fuse.bin files into there. So here comes the part of the tutorial that is kind of tricky, but I'll do my best to explain it. So just follow along and everything should turn out just fine. So we're going to go back once on our SD card into our bootloader folder and we're going to go to rentry.org slash Arista Imunand and we're going to scroll down to step three and I'm just going to make this smaller so you guys can see more. And as you can see right here, we're going to have to create a file and name it Hikate underscore IPL. Dot INI. So in order to do that, we're going to open up Notepad. And we're going to copy all this code text right here. And we're going to paste it into Notepad. Once we have that, we're going to save as. And we're going to save it onto our desktop. But before we do, we're going to change the save type file into all files. And now we can just copy the file name right here from Rentry copy and paste it into our file name. Once we have that, we can click save. And as you can see, it popped up right here. If you'd like to mod on your SysNan, there is an additional text you could put on your Hikate IPL. I'm going to include that in the description down below. Just know that you do risk getting banned as you will be modding on your stock switch technically. So just be more careful because you'll have access to the internet and you can play online games. So if you do any pirating, you definitely want to be more careful with that. So it'll look something like that and that would allow you to mod on your sysnand. And I'll show you how it looks in Hikate. So now we can drag that into our bootloader folder. And then we can go back one more time into the root of our SD card and do Exosphere now. So we're going to create another file and name it exosphere.ini. So we'll hit a new plus button right here to start a new file. And we'll copy and paste the code again into Notepad. 
And once again, we're going to save as. We're going to change the save as type to all files. And we're going to copy and paste the file name, exosphere.ini. Or you can type it in manually, up to you. And we're going to save it onto our desktop. And as you can see, it popped up right here. So we'll drag and drop that into the root of our SD card. Now, we're going to go into our Atmosphere folder. And we're going to have to create a new folder. Once we select that, we're going to name it Hosts. Enter. And we're going to open up that folder. And we're going to press plus on Notepad to start a new file. And we're going to copy this code text right here and paste it in. And then we're going to save as. And we'll copy the title of the file name, paste it into our file name. And just in case, we'll select all files again and save. And now we'll drag that into our host folder in Atmosphere. And now we can go back to the root of our SD card. Now we can close out of Notepad because we no longer need it. And we can minimize this. OK, so with all that finished, we're going to go and install Tegra RCM. So we're going to click the installer and just follow through the setup wizard. So we'll hit Next, Next, Install. And we're going to select Launch Tegra RCM and select Finish. OK, so before we do anything, we're going to want to go into the Settings tab, and we're going to want to install a driver. This is very important, and we need it for Tegra RCM to work properly. So we're going to select Install Driver, and it'll say APX device driver is missing. Do we want to install it? Select Yes. And then we're just going to select Next on the Installation Wizard, and Finish. Now we can go back to Payload. And this little folder with the magnifying glass, we're going to want to select that. And if you remember about that Hikate.bin file that I told you to put on your desktop, or if you created a separate folder for it, you're going to want to go to that file, select it, and open that up. And that's our injection payload. Now we can go back to our PC folder and right click on our SD card and eject it. OK, so now that we've ejected our SD card, we're just going to insert it into our Nintendo Switch. Next, we're going to remove the right Joy-Con. And you're going to want to grab your RCM jig. And you're going to want the metal prongs to go face down into the Joy-Con slot. So make sure it snaps in place. It should look something like that. And now, once our USB-C is connected to our computer, we're going to grab the USB-C end. And we're going to hold the power and plus button down and insert it into our switch. Now, if your switch powered on, instead of going into RCM mode, all you have to do is power it back down and just press the power and plus button again. You don't have to reconnect the USB-C because we already did that step. You'll know you put your switch into RCM mode when you see the no RCM symbol at the bottom left of the Tegra RCM app turn from red to green like this. That's how you know it's an RCM mode. Now we can inject the payload into our Nintendo Switch. And as you can see here, I've successfully smashed the stack with a 0 by 7000 byte setup. That's how I know it properly injected. If you get any other byte setup code like 0 by 000, 000 thousand, that means your Switch didn't properly inject. And more than likely, your Switch is patched. If you were following this tutorial, because while on is my switch patched, you got a yellow symbol saying your switch may or may not be patched. Well, here's your answer. Your switch is in fact patched. OK, so now we are on Hikate on its first boot up, and it'll ask us to enter the date and time. You can set that up if you'd like. I already went and did it ahead of time. So select done when you're finished setting that up. And now we can proceed with setting up our Emu MMC. So we're going to go to Tools. Oh, and I almost forgot. Before creating an Emu MMC on Hikate, you can back up your EMMC and restore your EMMC if anything were to go wrong. You can also back up your Emu MMC. I made a whole video on how to do that. It should be on my How to Mod Your Nintendo Switch playlist if you're interested in learning how to do that. So let's carry on in partitioning our SD card. So select Partition SD card, press OK. So in order to create an Emu MMC, you're going to want to drag the red slider to 29 gigs. 
If you plan on setting up Android or Linux, make sure you adjust those sliders as well before partitioning your SD card. For this tutorial, I'm not going to do that, so I'm just going to leave those blank. So select Next Step. You'll get a warning before partitioning. Select Start. Then press the power button to continue. Now it'll begin the partition. Once finished, press Done. Now go back to your home screen of Akate. Select Emu MMC and create an Emu MMC. Select SD partition, then select part one, and it'll create the Emu MMC for us. It'll take a while, so we'll come back when it's done. Now that it's finished, we can select close and close again. You can launch your custom firmware from payloads or launch it from the launch tab. Then select atmosphere, custom firmware, or if you'd like to go back to your stock switch, select stock. If you added custom firmware to your sysnan, you'll see it here as well in your launch tab. But for this tutorial, we'll launch the emunan only. Now that we're in our switch, we're going to check to make sure that the mod's installed properly. We're going to go into our system settings and we'll scroll all the way down. And as you can see, I'm on firmware version 18.1, running Atmosphere 1.7.1, and the E stands for my Emun end. So that's how I know that my mods were properly installed on my Nintendo Switch. Another way would be to go into your album and verify that you have your mods here. Also, I know you may be concerned that you no longer have access to your album, but that's not true. All you have to do is hold the R button while you select the album, and it'll load your regular album. Okay, I hope that helped you guys out. And that's how you mod your Nintendo Switch. I hope this video has helped you guys out, and if you could just like, comment, and subscribe, that always helps me out, and I greatly appreciate your guys' support. Thank you for helping me reach over 7,000 subscribers. It means a lot to me. And I see your comments on requesting updated videos for like my tinfoil video and how to install Android. That's definitely on my to-do list right after I get married. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. And as always, take it easy.